All right, in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and work through the process of creating a solid model of 5-66 swivel arm. And in this particular video, we're gonna talk about some constraints within Inventor in the sketch uh, area. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this two and three quarter inch diameter outside circle. And then I'm gonna space from center out to the other side of this part to center. And then I'm gonna make a one and three quarter inch diameter outside circle. So I'm going to go to my Inventor file, and this is a brand new part file in Inventor. And I'm going to grab my 2D sketch tool. I'm going to mouse over one of my origin planes and select it. And I'm going to start out with my diameter circle. And I believe that was 2 and 3 quarters, or 2.75. I'm going to grab my line tool, and I'm going to now space out the second circle over to the other side here. And I believe that that was 5 and a quarter. So I'll go ahead and space this out at five and a quarter. And then I'll draw the other circle over here. And I believe that that was one and three quarters. And I can actually type in one space bar three quarters using the forward slash. And that does the same thing. So now working with the constraints, this is where we need to understand some of these constraints that are showing up in Inventor. And I'll just do some things over here very quickly to explain some of this. But if I were going to go ahead and create a line, and I drew a line that comes straight down, the little constraint that's uh, existing just bottomed into the right of my cursor uh, that has looks like little feathers and a straight line to it, that little uh, constraint symbol uh, is a vertical constraint in that this line will never leave vertical. If I then click and now start coming across horizontally, I start to see the perpendicular constraint. And then next to this line, after I hit, after I click, I can now see that there are two constraints in relation to these lines. So there is now on this line two constraints. This constraint that's highlighted now is the vertical constraint. And then this is a perpendicular constraint. These constraints mean that regardless of the change in these two lines in length, they will always stay a particular distance, or they will, they will keep that relationship to each other. So if I make this three inches, or if I go ahead and I make this two inches, that does not change in that relationship. Now if I were to go ahead and then connect these two objects, so I now have a closed loop, if I then change this particular dimension to five, what that's saying is that these two lines are still going to keep that relationship, and yet this line will grow. So the constraints can allow you to make different sketch uh, pieces editable and changeable in the way that you want them to be. So what we can do is I want to go ahead and I want to use my tangent constraint so that the lines from this particular feature to this feature are tangent. So what I can go ahead and do is if I grab my line tool and I want to start from the top center of this circle and I go ahead and click and I draw up to this point. What I can do is start working my way around the edge of the circle and you may start to see what well, right there there's the tangent symbol that pops up that if I go ahead and click what that's going to do is it now places a tangent constraint on this line. So there's a relationship between this line and this circle as being tangent. You can see the relationship if you mouse over the symbol itself and sit there without clicking. You can see the two different pieces of geometry highlight. You now know that those have a relationship of tangent. If I grab my line tool, and I'm going to do again, start from the same point on the bottom and come across. If I just let this line get drawn long, and then I come back up to my tangent constraint tools, and I actually select the tangent tool. I can then select the line and then select the circle. And that line now snaps to have a tangent relationship with the circle. In order to have a clean extrusion, I would have to remove this portion of the line. So I would grab my trim tool and then mouse over what I want to trim, and then you get the dotted lines showing it can trim, and then I select it. When I remove that line, this can now start the extrusion process. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well, so my extrusion is not any more complicated, and then I'll finish the sketch. I can now go ahead and grab the extrude tool, and I can first extrude this particular feature, and I'll go back and take a look. See this feature here is two inches in height. I can go ahead and extrude that two inches in height, so I'm going to highlight and make that two. The sketch disappears, so I can then go and find that sketch again by going to the browser. I can select the little arrow next to Extrusion 1. When Sketch 2 shows up, or the sketch that's underneath, I can right-click and I can hit Visibility. Now I have the ability to extrude further portions. 
So I can grab the center, which I believe is 7 8 and I can finish out that extrusion, and then, of course, the end piece, and we'll go back and check that in height, and that is an inch and a half. So I can go ahead and change that to be an inch and a half. Now that that's set up, the last thing that I can do is go ahead and create the holes in this part, which are done very quickly by utilizing the hole tool. And I can grab from the placement area the concentric reference, and then I want to utilize this plane, and the concentric reference I'm going to utilize is that arc, which takes it to the center. And then I just go ahead and change the diameter. The diameter is 1 and 3 quarters. So we'll go back to here, and we're going to type in 1.75. And there's the hole going all the way through. And again, we'll do it to this other side. Again, grab my concentric reference. Grab concentric reference. And now I need to change this to one inch because it's a one inch hole. And again, the termination for the hole is going to be through all because I want it to go through all, not a distance, but through the entire piece here. And I hit apply. Go ahead and then cancel out of that. And now that part is complete and I can take it to the next step where I would then lay this out in a drawing file and begin to dimension.